who deserves a raise. This girl right here. She is the hardest working in this entire house and she carries everyone on her back. So let's give her the attention she deserves. For my work as a product designer in tech, I have an Apple M1 Max here and it has 64 gigabytes on it. This was given by my company, so I did not pay for this bad boy. Let's dive into my most frequently used apps. I'm gonna start with one of my more obvious ones, which is Figma. When I'm ideating, I'm in a fig jam. That's like my doodly, scoodly area where I literally let my brain hang out. Gross. But when I'm more into high fidelity and I have more mockups going on, then I will go into Figma files. The design tool that I use depends on the company that I work at. We use Figma here and they buy like a license for the entire design org, so it makes sense. But honestly, if I ever went to another company and they made me use something else, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know? Because Figma's like my life. It's my lover. I can't imagine using anything else. Moving on to another really awesome tool, which is called Writer. Our company has a license for it. And basically it's like if ChatGPT and Grammarly made a baby, I can ask Writer to create success banner copy or like judge up any tool tip copy, which is so awesome. And it basically uses our company's brand's tone of voice and also excludes any verbiage or words that our content designers have already programmed it to do, which is so like, technology. Unfortunately, I can't show too much since it's a lot of confidential work that's already in here and I'm scared that I might like accidentally leak something. Leaky leaky. I could use ChatGPT, but this is a company approved one. So like if any sensitive information went into here, were like protected or something, I'm not 100% sure. I also do use this sometimes for communication. Like I will literally say, hey, write out a message for me that says, I don't have time to do this for the millionth time and I have a life outside of work and make sure it's like really, really nice and like really cutesy and girly and like, I don't wanna get fired. So like be very polite. The next one I have on here is pretty cool. It's called raindrop.io. It's something that I use a lot for design inspiration. What I like about it is I can add links into this dashboard here, especially when I'm doing competitor analysis. I sometimes use a fig jam and I have a bunch of screenshots in there. It's just like a, it's just like a blah vomit of screenshots of all just like my thoughts and it can sometimes get really overwhelming and chaotic what i like about raindrop is that i can add links and it organizes it in a really neat way so let's say if i'm researching how to do a design for profile setup and i need a lot of inspiration i could take links from youtube i could take links from behance or like a medium article or like a walkthrough on TikTok and like literally throw every link in here, organize better and it's there forever. And so I have a lot of stuff in here like designs that I just think are fire and I have a lot of categories. And so I've used this pretty often. I like having it. It's essentially a giant bookmarks bar instead of having it overwhelming your bookmark. And so I like having my own little space for like design inspiration within Raindrop. The next app that I have here is Lumina. It is connected to my webcam. And if you haven't seen my desk setup video yet, I highly recommend you check that one out because I talk about my webcam and all the essential tech gear that I use as a UX designer. Basically, I opened this app up before any call and I'm in so many meetings, you guys. And so I just wanna make sure that like, I don't look washed out or the lighting's off and I'm too dark. And I'm just kind of like, a, basically like one of those silhouettes where I look like I'm like a hostage caller, you know, when like you disguise your voice and you're like, I need $5,000 by midnight. I don't want to look like that. Okay. I don't want to scare people off. I also don't want to scare people off and have chocolate all over my face. Cause it just stuffed my face with a bunch of like Snickers before I came into this meeting. Cause I was so hungry. But I mainly use it to adjust the brightness. Cause I sometimes have my blinds closed if the sun's hitting my eyes and stuff like that. So I just want to make sure that like I look presentable. Slack is the next one. I'm quickly going to go over this because I just want to say I use it all the time, but I don't want to get too deep into it because again, it depends on where you work. You could work somewhere where you use Microsoft Teams as your main form of communication. I'm not going to show it because it's super, super, super mega confidential and I would get fired, fired. Now we're going to go off apps and we're going to get into more web-based programs that I use as a UX designer. And I notice this because they're just up on my tabs all the time. And the first one is something that I'm so obsessed with and it's called Excaladraw. Basically, you just go to excaladraw.com and it's essentially this giant whiteboard where you can wireframe anything and everything. It's a free tool. You don't have to get a license to use it. And what I love about this is it's even lower fidelity than going into Fig Jam. Like this essentially mirrors a pen and paper type experience 
experience without having to use a tablet. So I use this quite often when I'm trying to just paint out an idea that I have and I'm telling you this is like a 5% design that I would have for my team and what's awesome is you can export that sketch and you can paste it into Figma or you can share it via Slack or whatever communication tool that you have. So I use this very often. I know a lot of designers and a lot of developers you know, actually a developer introduced me to this tool and it's just been like a lifesaver and I, I just love it. The next one I'm gonna quickly touch on because I use it so often is Loom. Loom is also a really great tool to use if you're working remote. There's a lot of times when I don't have the capacity to get everyone on a call, like our calendars are wild and like I just don't feel like getting in a meeting. And so I'll record myself talking while walking everyone through a design and then I'll just send it over to Slack and I am still able to articulate what I'm trying to get at without having to take away people's times and they could do it at their own pace. So like me recording my own little like YouTube videos and being a star, star. Last one is so good. You're gonna be so stoked off of this. The psychology of design, kind of hard to get to. So I'm gonna link it in my descriptions down below. It has over a hundred cognitive biases and principles that affect UX. And how I like to use it is it's a really great resource when I'm with my team and we're kind of stumbled on a decision and we don't know a path to move forward. And as like the last final push, I will use the psychology of a design to kind of drive my opinion forward for an example i'd say like hey let's go with the no banner approach because this already has a lot of success signifiers and we want to avoid banner blindness so they don't ignore more important visuals and i'll use one of those principles from this page to really drive a concept forward i also studied psychology in my undergrad so like this is something that i already knew ahead of being a ux designer and i just love to refresh my brain every now and then so highly recommend checking that one out as well thanks so much for for watching and if you're interested on any other UX design resources, I would watch this video next. See you next time.